Welcome, Aries Taurus, to your March love reading. Hope your friends are doing great out there. If your friends like this, hit that big old like button and subscribe. And welcome back, everyone. Okay, guys, let's get in here and see what's going on with you in love. Okay. Any messages coming in for my viewers, please? Best messages. And this is for someone that you might be with, someone who might be coming in. So we'll just see what's going on here. Uh, best messages coming in is healing family issues. So your love life benefits as you forgive your parents, your loved one. We're talking about love, so forgiving your loved one, right? So healing some kind of family issue going on over here when it comes to love. Wanting to express their love. So this person saying, I want to heal this family issue with you. I want to heal this love situation with you. Um, okay. Whether you're married or not married, it doesn't, I don't, it doesn't matter. It's a general reading. Okay. They just want, there is something about a reconciliation wanting them. They want to express their love. Okay. They want to come back. They want that forgiveness. They want to release the tensions with you. They want to heal this. They want to have those heart to heart conversations with you. They really want to express their love and fix this situation. I just kind of feel this like I'm I'm kind of tired of the argument. I'm tired of being the elephant in the room. I'm tired of the squabbling. I want this to be fixed. So let's see what's going on. I'm using the Romeo and Juliet cards. Yes, they feel like they've been rejected. Like you have rejected them. May even feel like you may reject them. So they may feel like, you know, you've already been rejecting them. Um, but they're all, they might also be worried that they're going to come back and try to have that heart to heart conversation with you and you're going to reject them. I don't want to talk about this. I'm done with you. Right. So they're, but they do say, say that they are very determined. They're pushing up the courage to come have this conversation with you. They want to get firm about the situation, but I feel like the firm, and it's crazy because there's a firm rejection and then we have the firmness. So it's almost like they know that there's a possibility you're going to put your foot down or you already have, and you could do it again. Um, they're building up this courage because they feel your firmness. They know that this is going to be a hard thing to do. Okay. So they're trying to build that courage, right? They find that this is a very serious matter. They don't want to take this not serious. They see that you see this very serious. They're taking this very serious at this time. Okay. So they are worried and they have a lot of concerns when it comes to this. There's a lot of fear here within them that you are not going to have this reconciliation with them. They're afraid you're going to say goodbye okay, forever and not want to um, fix this. Okay, So let's get some cards over here and see how they're feeling about the situation. That's what they are planning on doing in their mind. Whether they do it or not is a whole nother story. How long will it take? It's hard to say. Even if they take the, a the action, right? You can think a lot of things. They said, well, I, had a I knew that I lied. I knew that I was telling the partial truths. But I don't feel like you love me anymore. So I'm not sure how this is going to work. Yeah, they want to fix this commitment with you. Hmm. In their head, it was never over. To them, it was just never over. Even if they felt like they may have had someone better. Some of you it may feel like a third-party situation. They may have felt like they had someone better or that you had someone better, but they know that it's still never over. Even though they know that you don't, they feel like you may not love them anymore, they still feel like deep down inside you still may miss them. Kind of egomatic person you're dealing with. Okay, so... I know that I've lied and there was a lot of partial truths that were told. I don't think that you really love me anymore the way you used to, yet I really want to have this commitment with you because it's never over. Yet I may have picked someone over you or you may feel like there's someone better than me, something like this. Take it how it resonates there. Or I might have thought someone was better than you and I was wrong. But somewhere deep down inside, I do feel like you still are missing me. You might not love me the way you used to love me, but I still feel you miss me. <clears throat> uh, pride keeps us apart. I'm thinking their pride in itself is what's keeping everybody ahead. <clears throat> wow. Okay. So someone has unmet, unmet needs. So they may feel like you have unmet needs. 
Now they think you're needy. Hard keeps us apart and someone has unmet needs. I don't know about that. Sounds I don't know. They're saying that you have unmet needs and they think that they can they they're the ones that can meet these needs for you. Um what a misconception, the majority of you. Um sounds very egomatic. Okay. And let's see how this is going down over here. This message is coming out is patience. Having that self-control within the situation. Okay. For some of you, it was a, a very controlling person. Okay. Take immediate action where action needs to be met. Okay. So, yeah. And time to say goodbye. So you might just, you know what, it's almost like to the point where it's like whether you're saying goodbye to them personally or blocking or you've already blocked or maybe they're, you know, maybe you have to tell them goodbye for, you know, so they'll leave you alone. Um, however it is, but it does feel like, you know, that's the way it's going to be. For some of you have children with this person, so it's going to be harder to get away from them, right? Yeah. So definitely this is a person who can actually change moods real quick. So, right. And it just feels like, mm, I don't want to, I don't want to deal with you because you see this person as a type of person who is keeping secrets, right? So you're always keeping your inner strength, you know, about you. Um, they seem to be kind of masquerading who they are. You see this person as, you know what, kind of maybe full of themselves. They have a lot of wild stories that are not true. Um, there it is again, keeping secrets, a very secretive person. I'm not going to take anything from you because you know what? You're always, you're always keeping secrets. You're always, you know, telling lies, something of this nature. So it does feel like you're like, mm, right. So they may want to come back and have heart to heart conversations, but you're saying, I don't want you because they're always lying, right? Always masquerading as someone else. Um, you might already have a new love or you already have a deep love within yourself where you're just like, I'm passionate about my own projects, my own children, my own life, and I have all my other things. It just feels like this person frustrates you a lot and they seem to always bring in frustration. Um, so when this message comes in from them, it just feels like, yep, there goes the bad mood, right? That's going to put you in kind of a bad mood. And it always feels like you're going against the grain. It always feels like they're always leaping in with some kind of blind faith, but you're saying, I've ended that because I don't want to hear your stories anymore or your cares or you see what I'm saying? Um, yeah, this person might even come up with some things that try to make you angry or criticize you or make you feel guilty for this relationship ending, for this argument for this family dispute whether you're married however it is um, but you are coming in with clarity and understanding uh, for a lot of you you've left home um, or are planning to leave home because you, you're just tired of this and you do not want the reconciliation anymore there's been too many of them so I do see you actually planning on leaving or staying gone however the situation is and abandoning this situation completely 100% walking away saying I'm leaving behind this situation I do not want to fix this with you um, so this is definitely the tower moment again it's almost like they, uh, they're coming back just to cause another friction and cause another argument another disaster another discord and it's just like why right um, why do you want to do this and this is because they want to they want to rebuild this relationship with you so uh, uh, why would you come in causing discord i think that the discord is just trying to fix the relationship in the way that maybe they're trying to do so it makes you want to stand your ground feeling like you have to stand up for yourself which is kind of crazy because it's like if we're gonna have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation but then again i also feel like their heart-to-heart -heart conversation is on their terms and i think this is where the frustration comes in right because I do see some kind of emotional immaturity going on over here when it comes to this situation. And there it is, actually, at the bottom of the deck. How crazy is that? Emotional immaturity. So you could literally say you're emotionally immature. This is the way it always seems to be. They could be drinking heavily, overindulging, partying, having third-party situations. This person is always doing something, right? So you're trying to actually move towards calmer waters. I think it's kind of crazy because I think you've been trying your hardest to leave this behind and move to calmer waters for a while. Um, but this person just keeps, you know, trying to wean you back um, with, you know, 
with common sense, like you can't leave because of the children or you can't do this to the children or, you know, so you know what I'm saying? There's those guilt trips, right? And they're always trying to make you really reevaluate your priorities, you know, and it's kind of like, but this is the priority of me getting healthy, right? So however it is, it does feel like you're working without some kind of reward when it comes to the situation, when it comes to them. So why would I want to give you my, why would I want to give you my cups back? Right, you're gonna move on to follow your heart and go where your heart is and continue keep moving, right? <clears throat> okay, so and this person just feels to be they're very hopeless, have this hopelessness. They need to, um, they seem to be in a lot of despair about this situation. That's why they really want to fix this. Okay, so um, they just feel like they've it's hopeless without you. I, I feel a lot of codependency over here. I was actually waiting for the devil to pop out popped out his little head over here um but i haven't seen that yet so yeah but they're gonna come in playing victim towards the situation um, but i think that you already know this this is why you've become very emotionally stable towards the situation um i do see you being more you know stable um but i just think that now that your emotions are becoming more stable where it used maybe for some of you i'm not gonna say for everybody but I do feel like your emotions are better, so therefore, you know, you're done with all the, you know, the heartache pieces. Um, and now it's become more of the anger, you know, frustrated, anger. Stop doing that. You're pissing me off. You see what I'm saying? So now you're, you're more of a queen of swords than you are the queen of cups. Do you see what I'm saying? Um because you're not using overall emotions anymore. You're saying my emotions are stable, right? So I would say that you're now the queen of cups upright, but at one time I do feel that they did have you upside down. I do feel that they did have you in this, you know, this, um, the inner feelings part, the sadness, the night, you know, and definitely going with the eight and nine of swords, right? Um, and now I just feel like you do not, you're, you're not, you're stable. You're ready. You know what's going on. And I think that they're confusing you, right? You coming out disciplined as the king of swords over here. I'm sorry, the king of swords. I thought it was the queen of swords. Um, but anyways, you coming out over here, right, as the, you used to be the queen of, of cups for a lot of you, but now you're saying, uh-uh, I'm the king of swords and my emotions know exactly where they are. They know exactly where to be, right? I am not floating around in my emotions anymore. I understand the situation. I know, and I'm honest with myself about how things are happening over here, right? I am now head over heart, not heart over head, right? Because heart over head means, oh my gosh, you got me in my emotions, right? So it's just showing that you're more relaxed about this situation, but they're going to come in very dominating and very controlling about the situation and very stubborn because they think that they're, ooh, they still think you have some kind of lack of confidence or that you're, they, they see you as the weaker link. Ooh, he's a bully. He or she is a bully then. Because those who pick on, those who are, you know, weaker in emotions, showing that's showing manipulation and deception and bullying. So they're going to try to bully. They think, ah, oh. okay, so their so-called heart-to-heart -heart conversation, what they think is heart-to-heart -heart conversation is actually them coming in trying to manipulate a situation and bully their way. Okay, okay, I got you. Now that's, I see it. I got it. Mm-hmm. Oh, I got it. Mm-hmm. This is why you have to have self-control. This is where you get the patience. This is where I've, I've gathered all this strength. Aha. You freed yourself from that situation, from those energies. And I do feel like for a lot, yeah, see, a lot of them is codependency. And I do feel a lot of you, there is children involved in this situation so that every time that they're coming around, I see you having to put on, you know, you have to stand your ground. You, you need to be that king of swords. You can't show them any kind of weakness but they want to come back to try to heal this come on we have to do it for the kids just keep hearing that we got to do it for the kids you know i don't know who that's for um but you're saying no 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 i have unrequited love for you this is you know whether the kids are here or not right it's almost like okay we'll have like this forget this forgiving can we just release this situation then for the children right stop it though right 
stop this this crap because what they don't understand is you release them right i've released you and for some of you you have a new soulmate you have a new true love you right you're, you might even be engaged to this other person but this person is just not going to let you go out of their energy wow okay Alrighty then They're coming in pretty forceful. Um, that's, you know, for some of you, it's kind of crazy because I even feel like, oh God, here it goes again. It's like this happens every couple of months. I don't know. I don't know who that's for, but I do feel that like it's kind of like a back and forth thing. Maybe it's because they're drinking. They have some kind of addiction or something. Okay, my friends, until next time, peace and love.